My next guest has got a massive fight coming up here against Talia Santos, UFC Fight Night, February 18th. It's Aaron Blanchfield back here on the program. Aaron, how are you? I'm doing great. How are you? Doing awesome. Where am I getting you today? You're in the car. Are you coming back from practice, going somewhere? Where am I getting you? Uh, I was just getting some coffee after practice this morning. Are you a Starbucks type of person or are you like mom and pop? What type of coffee do you get? Uh, I like local like coffee shops. Like I just went to like a local one around uh, me. But I love Starbucks too, but I, I like going to local places. Yeah, got to support the mom and pops because Starbucks has taken over the world, right? So uh, so yeah, there, there you go. Um, I loved how you announced this fight, by the way. So uh, people haven't seen it. You're on Morning Combat. You kind of just casually mentioned you're like, hey, I'm fighting Talia Santos. Tell me how this all came together. Uh, yeah, so like a week or two after my fight at MSG in November, uh, the UFC was already kind of contacting me about this fight. It wasn't like booked for sure, but they're just kind of like asking if I would fight her. Um, and I agreed to it. And then, yeah, literally like right after that, I pretty much got a contract signed right away. Um, it came up pretty quick. Like I, I'm usually used to having some time between fights, but um, this one came up quick and it was perfect because I was fine right after my fight, uh, no injuries or anything. Uh, so, yeah, I was really happy to get that fight booked and be able to hop right back into camp. On a scale of one to 10, how surprised were you to get this fight? Um, no, yeah, I, I wasn't super surprised. I'd say probably like a five. Like I didn't, I wasn't sure if I was going to get someone that high. Like I definitely expected someone above me in the rankings, um, especially being on the streak that I am on, like I'm on now. Um, but then when I got offered that fight, I was kind of looking at the division and who has fights and who's hurt. Um, and stuff like that. So I, it didn't, it wasn't that much of a surprise that I got matched up with Talia because some girls are already matched up. Some can't fight right now. So, um, and she hasn't fought in a while and she just, she had a pretty rough fight her last one. So, um, so yeah, I think it kind of makes sense. Okay. Well, the reason I'd say a little bit of a surprise is because I think some people felt like they were going to do the rematch with the fact that that fight against Valentina was really close. I was curious how you scored that fight. I'm sure you've watched it since then. Oh, yeah, I definitely watched it since then. I remember watching it live. I thought Talia might have edged it out a little bit. I think she has a little more ground control. Um, but re-watching it, I can see how they gave it to Valentina. I mean, it was a split decision for a reason. It was a super close fight. Um, I could, I'm, I mean, I'm not really sure why they wouldn't do a rematch right away, uh, considering, like, how close it was. But um, maybe they just want someone new for Valentina or they have other plans for her. So um, if Talia wants to fight in the meantime, I think I'm a perfect opponent. <laughs> Yeah, and, and you kind of look at this as a huge opportunity, right? Like some people felt like Talia did enough to beat Valentina. If you beat her, do you see yourself taking that momentum and maybe even getting a title shot after this? Oh, uh, definitely. I mean, everyone's been hyping her up because she did well against Valentina. Um, so beating her definitely makes a big statement for me. Um, and I get to take her spot. And uh, if it's a title fight next or just one other fight, I don't really care. But I know it's going to move me up pretty far. That's excellent. And I imagine your new contract, right? If I'm not mistaken, because wasn't that the last one on your old deal? Uh, no, I actually had signed a new contract uh, right before the Molly fight. Uh, and then I signed another new one. So I've signed like two new deals in the last couple months. That's all. And I'm sure, I mean, we don't have to get into details, but I'm sure a nice pay bump. Like you got to be feeling good now, like with what you've been able to accomplish over the last couple of years, especially in the UFC. Oh yeah, for sure. Um, I mean, I feel like my fights prove that I like deserve it, you know, and it's, it's definitely nice uh, getting those bumps, but, uh, you know, you still got to go win to, you know, kind of solidify your spot there. So I always kind of keep that in my mind. Um, you can be happy and excited for it, but you need to keep putting the work so you, you can keep it, you know. Yeah. Well, part of the reason was that last fight, you know, again, you're, you're from uh, obviously New York, New Jersey area. And I'm sure that was odd just, you know, seeing people, you know, kind of rooting for her a little bit. But you went out there and dare I say flawless performance uh, in, in that one. Uh, just how satisfying was that victory, knowing that there were a lot of people, I think, who, you know, were cheering for Molly, right? Yeah, I was definitely getting a bunch of booze, uh, which wasn't uh, the nicest. But I knew like all my family and friends that were there were supporting me. Mm -hmm. And that's all I really cared about. And, you know, I, I knew going in that I was going to get booed. Molly's such a star um, in her own right. And I knew anybody that came out to watch was obviously going to cheer for her. And anybody that didn't know me was probably just going to jump on that um, and cheer for her. But I, I knew what I was able to do. And I knew um, when I go in there and I, I, I can do what I do that everybody's cheering for me after. So, yeah, it worked out perfect. You know, they made the win that much sweeter. Did you get a lot of new fans after that fight? Um, yeah, I mean, I had some people, like, like I remember outside the hotel, some people were like, oh, I came to cheer Molly, but that was a crazy <laughs> fight, like, fan now. So uh, definitely got some more fans from that. Um, yeah, yeah, so for sure. That's good. Uh, did you talk to Molly after the fight? Because uh, she's always pretty respectful to all of her opponents. Did you guys get to chat at all? Uh, I mean, I chat a lot. In the cage, uh, she told me congrats, and she's like, oh, you did what you had to do. 
Um, and I was like, yeah, thanks, because at that way in, she was definitely getting my face a bit um, and talking a little the trash. But um, but yeah, she was definitely respectful afterwards. And obviously, she's one of the few fighters sponsored by Barstool. I know you had the post ahead of time, uh, you know, like uh, on, on Instagram and stuff, which I thought was hilarious. Did you get to meet or talk to Dave Portnoy after the fight? Uh, no, I didn't meet him. Uh, I saw him because like right where I was standing in the cage, he was like literally seated like right behind me. So that was pretty funny. But he wouldn't even like look in our direction. Like me and my coach were kind of like pointing him out. Um, but no, he didn't, he didn't look at us. <laughs> they should have given you a contract after that performance, don't you think? Yeah, but you know, that's his girl. So I kind of went in there and destroyed her. So it'd be a little, I guess, odd for him to just turn around and switch yeah. teams. Yeah, no, for sure. All right. Let's talk about Talia Santos, 19 and two record. I mentioned the fight with Valentina, very impressive performance, even in a loss. How are you looking at this fight style wise? Um, you know, I think we're both like well-rounded fighters. Uh, I know she came, I know her father was like a Muay Thai uh, coach, so she came up doing some of that. Um, but she's well rounded. I mean, her cage wrestling is good. Her jitsu um, is pretty good. I think I'm, uh, I'm. I feel like my jitsu is definitely better. I feel like I'm a little more dynamic. Um, yeah, so I feel like we're both well rounded. But I, I know I can put everything together a little better than she can. And uh, what about camp? Anything different or business as usual? Who are you mainly working with, getting ready for this fight? Uh, yeah, no, it's the same people I've been working with for all my fights, uh, honestly, since I went pro. So, yeah, like Silver Fox, BJJ, uh, MK Muay Thai, Cordoba Train. Um, and yeah, all my same training partners. Um, you know, it's been working and I, I've been getting the wins and getting better. So, uh, yeah, it's been it's been working out well. Any uh, traveling up to Henzo Gracie's, maybe working with Caitlin Chikagan or anyone like that? Because I know you two have trained together in the past. Uh, yeah, we've trained together in the past. Um, we haven't really been training uh, together recently, uh, cause I'm in Jersey. She's in Long Island. Um, stuff like that. So no, just kind of my people in Jersey. Okay. Is that a fight that, I mean, obviously you're fighting Santos. So I think, I mean, if you, if you look at the rankings, you're sort of ahead of her in terms of if you get this win, but is that a fight you probably wouldn't want to have just cause you guys have trained together or would you fight her? Uh, you know, I mean, I would rather not if I didn't have to, um, yeah. I've known Caitlin for a really long time since I was like nine years old or so. Um, I mean, if we had to, like, if we had to for like a number one contendership or something or to fight for the title, um, I know both of us would want to and have to. Um, so that'd be the only scenario where I'd, where I'd fight her. If, if I could avoid it, I would. How's your brother doing? Uh, he's doing good. Uh, he's still training. Uh, he's been training with me for this fight too. Um, and for the last one, uh, he's focused on school right now. Okay. That makes sense. And, uh, you mentioned sort of the camps and stuff. Who, what about training partners who have been some of the main ones, uh, leading into this fight? Uh, yeah, I've been training with, um, Tanisha Tennant, who's fighting for Invicta next week and Fatima Klein, uh, too. They're both fighting, uh, next Wednesday. They've been some of my main training partners and then a couple guys, like then my brother, I always spar with and, um, a couple other people at, uh, my Muay Thai gym I'm finding work in with. So, um, yeah, those are my like main training partners. We just had the holidays. How's the weight cut going? I'm sure you got to uh, maybe enjoy a tiny bit of Christmas, but uh, obviously you got to cut that weight. Uh, yeah, I like to start out pretty like far out, like eight weeks out. I usually start my cut. So literally like Christmas Eve was eight weeks out. So I, I didn't eat anything for Christmas. I mean, I really? all my family. So I got to enjoy the time with them. Um, but yeah, no, no holiday cookies or anything for me. I always wonder how that worked. Like, do you bring Tupperware over to like your parents' house or something? Like, how does that work during the holidays? Cause everyone's eating and then you can't eat, or do you just kind of eat what you can at the table? That's not going to be bad for you. Right. Oh no. I always prep my own stuff and I bring it with me. Uh, everybody, I mean, especially at this point, everyone in my family understands and they know. So, um, yeah, I always bring everything I need with me. Yeah. That's awesome. And, uh, your corner, I imagine that's going to stay the same who will be in the cage with you. Yeah, um, as of right now, it'll still be Frankie Roberts, Augie Matias, my brother, Brendan Blanchfield. And how's this fight playing out? I know you don't like getting paid by the hour. You've been getting a lot of finishes. Uh, how, how do you see this one playing out? Oh, I definitely want to get another finish in this fight. Um, I'm on a two-fight uh, finishing streak right now, and I want to keep that winning streak going and, and finish this fight. Um, whatever happens, you never really know um, until you get in there, but I'm looking for a finish for sure. Have you been told anything by the UFC? Like, have they mentioned to you or your management that like, hey, like you get a win here, we're going to fast track you. Have you been told anything like that? Uh, no, no, I haven't been told anything like that. Um, you know, and even if I was, I'd rather focus on this fight and see what happens next. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you know, there's so many things changing. Fights can, certain fights can happen, certain fights can fall out. So um, yeah, just focus on this one for now. No, that, that makes sense. I mean, look, we got a, the light heavyweight division. Jamal Hill is getting a title shot. I don't think anyone would have predicted that, uh, you know, back in December, right? When uh, Jan Blachowicz and Ankle Ive were fighting each other, right? So, 
Yeah, that's for sure. Yeah, exactly. You never know what's going to happen. So, um, yeah, it's going to see how, how the field plays out, honestly. So I spoke to Macy Barber uh, a couple months ago and I asked her about your fight against Molly because obviously I was asking her about, you know, sort of fights in the division and seeing if she pays attention. Of course, you two were supposed to fight, right? There was a fight, I think, booked or at least there was talked about. Anyways, the reason I bring it up is because I asked her about your fight and, you know, getting her thoughts here. And she had some interesting comments. She says, I think Aaron is being handed girls that don't know how to grapple. I think she got outstruck by JJ Aldrich. I think in that fight with Molly, Molly's not that great of a fighter. I think Aaron's all right. It's just a different level. Uh, what do you what do you say to that? Uh, Macy talking a little trash here. Um, you know, it's funny. I don't really care what she has to say. I know she's probably a little scared to fight me. She hasn't. And she's scared to fight a couple people. I know there's a couple of fights that she hasn't taken. Uh, it's funny. She's going to talk trash because she's very strategic with who she fights. Um, and that's for a reason. I think she knows she's not at a certain level. And she's like trying to wait until she is. But it's she's never going to be. Um, and that's kind of her main problem. Um yeah, so whatever she says, it doesn't matter. I know we're probably going to end up fighting at some point just because we both are in the division um, and we're both going to be there for a while. Uh, so, yeah, I think it'll be, it'll be a, a shocker for it when we do. Um, some people say that you're what Macy Barber should have been. Remember, Macy talked about being the youngest champ and all this stuff. Uh, do you take that as a compliment or does that annoy you that people are even comparing you to her? Um, no, I don't really care. I get it. like. Um, impaired or anything like that i think it's kind of funny when people do because i have heard that they're like oh blanche feels what macy thought she would be i think it's really funny because i know comments like that probably get under her skin like people could say anything to me i i don't really care because i know at the end of the day they're just saying it to try to get a reaction out of you um but uh yeah i think comments like that are pretty funny because i'm curious how other people take them and just last thing on macy she's fighting andrea lee do you see her coming out on top in that fight or do you think andrea will uh, get back on the winning track um you know, I can definitely, I can see her edging out that fight. Um, she might put a little, she sets a pretty high pace and she goes really hard. Um, so I think she can kind of edge out Andrea. And Andrea hasn't been looking too hot lately. It seemed, I know at one point she was pretty good, but I feel like she's been falling back a little bit. So um, I could see Macy winning that fight. What did you think of Mana Fjord defeating uh, Caitlin Jukagan? Like I mentioned, you trained with Caitlin. Uh, I think some people were surprised to see her her get the win there. Yeah, um, I knew it was gonna be a tough fight. That stylistically, they're very similar, um, and yeah, it was it was a super close fight. I remember watching it and not really knowing who was winning until I know um, Manone got like a takedown at the very end of one of the rounds, and I remember feeling like that kind of clinched the fight for her. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's definitely. I mean, you can't be that surprised. It, it's all everybody's so good that it's like anybody can win on a certain day. Um, but yeah, Manone definitely edged out that win. What do you think of Tatiana Suarez coming back and her being in your division? That's going to be interesting. A little sp shaking things up a little bit. Uh, yeah, I think it's definitely interesting. I know she's coming back at 125. Uh, I'm curious to see if she stays there because I know, I know even when I first uh, got into the UFC, when I, uh, well, when I beat Maverick, everyone was like, "Oh, I'd love to see Erin versus Suarez because of our wrestling. Like our styles are similar." Um, so yeah, I mean, if she stays at 25, that would definitely be an interesting fight. And then last thing on your division, uh, who do you think Valentina fights? Is it Alexa Grasso? Like, I think everyone's kind of wondering what's going on. If, if Santos, the rematch wasn't going to happen, you would think then maybe Grasso. Is that kind of what you're thinking as well? I know it's not your job to match make, but I'm sure you're keeping an eye on the division, right? No, I definitely am. Um, yeah, I would definitely, I think Grasso would make sense. I don't know if Grasso wants that fight. I think, I mean, Grasso's very good and I don't know why she wouldn't, but um, it seems like she's not too eager to fight for that. Um, and then I'm not sure if the UFC is trying to maybe set up Valentina with Nunez again. I know everyone's yeah. been talking. Everyone lo loves, lo I mean, they fought twice already and I, everyone seems like they still want to see another one. Um, so maybe that's what they're thinking. There's also some rumblings about the UFC maybe coming back to Brooklyn. I've heard maybe April is a date and then obviously they do the, you know, typical November one, which you were on. Do you want to fight uh, close to home again? Do you like that? Oh, I love fighting close to home. Um, any car that was around New Jersey or New York, I'd love to be on. It was kind of nice to be able to come home uh, like during fight week um, and even just have like be able to go train at my gyms um, and have all my coach because like you can have a couple coaches, but you can't have everybody or all your training partners. So it was really nice to have um, everybody around uh, during like my entire fight week. So um, if I could fight on a local card every fight, I definitely would. Speaking of local cards, I know, again, the focus is camp, but any commentary gigs are coming up, any regional stuff? Because I know you were doing that a, a couple years ago, right? Uh, yeah, well, I've done some recently for like uh, some grappling, uh, competitions. I don't have anything booked right now. Um, especially after getting this fight, I, I've been like super focused on this. What, what are you doing for, for downtime right now? You watching any Netflix? You getting in anything? Like, what are you doing when you're not training? Um, yeah. Oh, on Netflix. I just rewatched, uh, the whole series called you, cause I know they have like a new season coming out 
in like February or so. So that's what I've been into. Um, no, yeah, that's pretty much it. <laughs> okay. And last question, what are your goals this year? You know, I, most people at the end of, you know, the year, they kind of reflect. And then, you know, this month is, is the time for setting goals. Do you have any? And if so, what are they? Um, you know, for me right now, I don't, I don't really knew, like take the new year as like setting a bunch of new goals. I feel like throughout the year, I'm always setting goals like with fights, like you want to win your next fight or if there's something else coming up in your life, I kind of like set up a goal for that. Um, it's just about being consistent. It's not necessarily like, certain time i mean for me at least i don't think there's like a certain time of year where you need to set certain goals it's just kind of like what comes into your life and uh what you want to do so for me right now my goal is winning finishing this fight february 18th i'll let you get back to uh, ordering some coffee which by the way are i what what type of coffee do you normally get i'm a nitro cold brew guy myself what what do you like getting uh i love cappuccinos or lattes okay good choice uh aaron thanks for doing this big fight like i said ufc fight night february 18th if there's anyone you'd like to thank any sponsors any social media you want to plug i'll give you the last word uh yeah you can see all my social media at blanchfield underscore mma um and all my sponsors and everywhere i train is you'll see it there